What's up everyone? Welcome back for another video. If you're brand new here, please hit that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, you're awesome. Thank you. Let's get into the video. So today's video is about brakes. And it's about brakes on my Colorado ZR2, which is right back there. As you can see, I'm already in the process of doing the brakes. I wanted to get some done before I started filming because because if you didn't know, filming this stuff makes everything take a lot longer. So don't have a ton of time today to film because I gotta get the video edited and posted because tomorrow I'm busy all day. I'm gonna shut up about that. Let's talk about the brakes. I have 39,000 miles on my truck and it's not due for brakes, but I'm gonna do the brakes. There's been a little bit of noise on the front driver's side. We're gonna see if it's down to the little uh, noise maker thing on the brake pads. Um, I, I don't think it is, but that doesn't matter. We're upgrading the brake because you figure you're adding the weight of the new wheels and tires, which is went from 31s to 33s. I didn't weigh the previous. I didn't weigh the stock wheels, but these wheels are definitely heavier. Then roof rack, light bar. I don't have it on right now, but I do have a bed rack, and there's a rooftop tent for stuff like that. So then you figure adding all the weight for camping gear and stuff like that when you go camping. It's a lot of weight in the truck. You need to slow the truck down. That's the reasoning for the brakes because you add a lot of weight. A lot of people don't think to upgrade the brakes to help the truck slow down. A lot of people just want to do modifications to make the truck faster or lift it higher and whatnot. But you're adding a lot of weight. You need to slow it down. The stock brakes are adequate enough, but we're upgrading. We're almost at 40,000 miles and it's time for an upgrade. So what we got here is this is the PowerStop Z36 kit. So it comes with vented and slotted and drilled and all that stuff rotors, which isn't completely necessary. And then new brake pads. So I have the front and rear for this truck. I did one front. We're going to do the other front together. If you didn't know how to change brakes, this will be a little quick tutorial. Brakes are very simple to do. Let's, let's go film this quick and then we'll maybe we'll turn the truck around and do the rears or maybe we'll just do it in place. Come on. So we are in there. So this is the brake caliper, which has two 18 millimeter bolts on the backside. This is a T30 Torx bit, which holds the rotor on. Not completely necessary, but it's a nice little, uh, nice little thing. So when you take this off, the whole rotor doesn't fall off. We're gonna take this brake, we're gonna take the brake caliper off, and then you're gonna make sure you hang it with something zip ties, bungee, because you don't want to hang it by the brake line. Let's get this off. Before we do that. Um, when you put your, when you put your tool on this to try to remove it, you'll see. oh, never mind. The other side I had to hold with a pry bar. This side might be tight. If, if it spins, you could get someone to hold the brake or you could just in the, find the best spots possible to do it, but wedge it with like a pry bar. So if it spins, the pry bar stops it not really ideal, you're better off having someone hold the brakes for you. Let's do this. Quick little before and after. Same size, obviously, just different setup. These are actually marked front driver side, which is what we're doing now comes with a little layer of grease, film, oily stuff on it. So make sure you wipe it down, brake clean, which I didn't have, so I did rubbing alcohol a couple times. Get whatever you can off of it. Now here's where the mildly tricky part may or may not be, but there's a couple little things you gotta do here. I think most cars usually have to remove the caliper completely to take the uh, to change the brake pads. We probably could have got away with just doing brake pads, but we're upgrading the whole system. It's very simple, you just need some needle nose pliers to take out a couple pins, and then you swap them out. You're gonna have to compress the caliper a little bit, but let's take a look, so. As you see here, there's a pin there that's gonna, I don't know if I can get that. There we go, got it with my hand. That one, and then you have one up there that's gotta come out. Then you're gonna need like a drift pin or screwdriver or something to tap these out. They're not in there tight, but you just need something to help you remove them. 
and then you just got to make sure this doesn't launch across your driveway. Then pads slide out. I should have turned this whole wheel a little bit so you could get a better view at it, but but uh, I'm gonna try to take this guy out. It's probably gonna fall in the caliper, so we're just gonna have to look for it afterwards. Simple as that. Go over it one more time for you guys because I don't know how much of it I was blocking with my head. So let's take a quick look. That's a T30 right there. And like I was saying earlier, you might need someone to hold the brake to crack that loose. So do that before you take the caliper off or else you need to use some sort of mechanism. You have to use some sort of wedge to make sure that doesn't spin. So T30, 18 millimeters. If you're not doing the rotors, skip that and then just come to the brake caliper. So as you see on the back, there's a pin, there's a little pin there, another pin there, pull those out. Um, both sides, um, passenger and driver's side, one was the other way around. They could work their way, spin a little bit, but make sure you don't lose those because you, you want to make sure these go back so these pins don't come out. But pull those out, then you need some sort of screwdriver or drift pin or something, tap these out, make sure this pad doesn't go flying because it's kind of sandwiched in there. It's kind of like spring loaded at this point. Pull it in. You might need something to compress your caliper a little bit. So um, I used channel locks. I grabbed the caliper and the brake pad, squoze it so it compressed a little bit. You know, it actually doesn't take too much force, but do that. Pull the pad out, take the new one, grease it up, put the new one in, and just reverse everything. Not bad. So, since we compressed the caliper, um, which I didn't do that much because they were still a little snug going in, but since we compressed the calipers, when you turn the truck on, pump the brakes a couple times, make sure you get some pressure because I have done in the past where I went to pull up in the driveway and I went to hit the brakes and there was no brakes there, so I had to pull the e-brake because I forgot to pump the pressure a little bit just to make sure because the whole hydro the brakes, hydraulic system, whatever, you kind of pushed the fluid back into the rest of the system, so you just gotta make sure you kinda pump it a little bit, if that makes sense. So now that the fronts are done, which I'm gonna do something off camera now, is cut these tie rod sleeves, which I don't really wanna do, but if I don't do it now, I'm never gonna do it, so. These are the peak suspension tie rod sleeves. These were the original design, and from my understanding, having it this long, is no good for your steering rack. So the weak point is, I think, over here somewhere on your actual, on your tie rods, because those will be the point of failure, which is actually the point you want to fail so you don't destroy your steering rack. But with this, you're strengthening this tie rod up way too much, and then the next weakest point is your steering rack. The new design, they have, a, they have this design, and then they have a short design, which I believe is like about three inches. So I'm gonna take these off and cut these quick. Then we're gonna get back to doing brakes. I instantly regret that decision. So uh, driver's side's done, passenger side, I can't get off. So um, at, least, at least that side's okay. Right. Not bad though. So passenger side seems to be seized on there pretty well. I can't get this sleeve off. Truck may or may not be out of alignment. It's close though. All right, let's just do the rears quick. I don't know if this is a good uh, angle for you guys, but same rules apply. So got that little T30, got 18s on the back. We're gonna take the whole caliper off so we can change the rotor. Then we're gonna put the caliper back on and take this little floating section of the caliper off to uh, swap the brakes over. Like I was saying earlier, put something there. So when it turns, it wedges itself. Make sure you put enough in the pressure, crack it loose. 
that off. Got that. Pry bar. Yes, sir. Remember, not hanging the caliper anywhere. Press it on the axle. Might need a little persuasion taking this off. Let's go check the old ones next to the new ones. There you go, old, new. Same as the front, but different. I mean, similar to the front, slightly different because the e-brake is within the drum. It's kind of drum style e-brake, but let's go back to the truck. Same thing applies. Wipe these down with preferably brake clean, but I didn't have any, so we was rubbing alcohol multiple times. Get all whatever oily bits off. Let's throw this on the car. Old, new. You can see how much meat's on the new one. One thing to take note when you're swapping these out, the one on the outside of the car uh, has these two little nubs on them. So make sure you have that for your new one. Your old one has this little like, has the noise maker for when you know when your brakes are too low. The new one doesn't have it on. The new one doesn't have it on it, you have to you have to snap it on. 12 millimeter bolts on the back of this caliper. This is the floating part of the caliper. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave this one in so you can get the bottom one so it just held on to something. Now this section, as you see, that has these little brackets. Um, these probably don't have to get changed, but it comes with new ones, so we're going to change them out without cutting our fingers. Then we get some pliers. Comes with grease. Put your grease on. This spot right here doesn't need much pressure. You just gotta compress it. And just line it all back up. Rear brakes are on, front and rear are done already. Pretty simple process. Anyone could do this, even a caveman. We get lucky on this truck because the e-brake is a drum brake system. Some cars have the e-brake as part of the caliper and that is a pain in the ass to compress that one. As you saw in this, I just had some channel locks on the caliper and I was barely applying any pressure. You could find something else. You could probably, you could even do it by hand if you really wanted to, but get a better grip with the, the channel locks. You could wedge a piece of wood in there or whatever you just gotta use something because obviously the new ones have a lot more meat on it so so you need to compress the caliper a little bit to fit back over the new brake pad since there's more meat on them so you're not done yet obviously you got to put the wheels back on it but then you have to go and take the truck for a drive and bed in the new brake pads so i'm gonna look to see if they have the recommended way on the brake pad box then we're gonna go from there well let me throw the wheels back on and get the car back on the ground put all these tools away one question for you zero two people. Um, I don't know if my leaf springs are cool or not. It's way too bright. If you look, it almost makes like a little W. Sag up sag. Yeah. I've seen people on the Facebook groups post that their springs are, their leaf springs do the same thing. Um, I don't remember the outcome. I don't remember the answer for every, from everyone. I know everyone's just like, oh, upgrade the uh, upgrade your leaf springs, put Devers on, blah, blah, blah. Is that normal? I don't know. Let me know. Power Stop recommends you doing, read this right off the box, five aggressive decelerations from 40 to 10 miles an hour, then five moderate decelerations 
from 35 to 5 miles an hour and then drive around slowly to let your brakes cool down for five minutes. Then you're good. What they really want you to do is the first five, you gotta do pretty close to each other so you heat the brakes up, you want them to get nice and hot. Then the same with the second five from 35 to five. So um, you're gonna be slamming your brakes a lot, so just try to find a nice empty road if you can. I don't know where the hell I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go for a little ride and do this, get these bedded in, come back home, and uh, that, that'll be it. All right, so we're back home. Manufacturer directed bed-in procedure all done. Brakes seem to be working pretty damn good. I'm happy with this mod. And like I was saying earlier, this is a nice upgrade, especially with all the extra weight in the truck. Bring you to a nice stop a lot faster. One thing I forgot to mention uh, when you're doing the rears, make sure you don't have your e-brake on or you'll never get that brake rotor off. Top tip right there. Now I'm gonna put a link down below to where I ordered these from. I'm gonna leave some Amazon links down below for some of the product, for some of the items I used in this video to make your life a little bit easier. And that's it for me. Post videos every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 3 p.m. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave some comments down below. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.